The second part of the discipline without stress teaching model is practicing three principles, which as I mentioned are universal and they will help you not only in your teaching, but also in your personal life as well. If you listen to any motivational speaker or any clergyman who wants to improve your life, they will talk about one of these three principles or practices. The first people talk about is attitude. Now, what about attitude? I refer to the word as positivity. The second we're going to be talking about is choice. And the third we're going to be talking about is how do you influence people to change themselves? And the key behind that is reflection. So let's start with positivity. By way of an example, do any of you have any children? Okay, now think for just a moment. It's your child's very first day of school. The youngster comes home. What are some of the questions you ask? Did you have a good day? Did you make any friends? Inevitably, the question is asked, do you like your teacher? We know intuitively that if the young kid has bad feelings about his or her teacher, the entire educational year is going to be affected and maybe the kid's entire educational career. It's critical to understand the connection between how you feel and what you think. This is how it works. We get things, of course, through our own thoughts, as well as what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch. It comes in through our senses, and it immediately goes through an area of the brain called the amygdala. Now, I'm referring to a book, a very popular book, written by Antonio Damasio, entitled Descartes' Error. You may recall René Descartes in about 1647 uh, penned the words, I think, therefore I am, which set the stage for Western philosophy and Western medicine. The East has never separated the brain from the body. And now we know, proven scientifically, how what we think affects how we feel. You absolutely cannot separate the two. Hence Descartes' error, Descartes tried to separate the two. Physically, you cannot do that. Because what happens is, as I mentioned, and I'm emphasizing this point, that with every bit of cognition, there comes a feeling. Right now, without even realizing it, you're self-evaluating. Your thought is, I like this guy, I wish he'd do that or that. My point is, it's critical to understand, if you want to be a successful teacher, you've got to think of kids' feeling. Now, think of anything that you bought. I mean, aside from something that you really needed to live on. Did you need it? Or did you want it? Chances are you wanted it. That's an emotion. And then what we do is we justify it rationally. With every bit of cognition comes an emotion. Again, by way of example, somebody compliments you. They just said words. Does it prompt a good emotion? Yes. Somebody criticizes you. They just said words. Does it prompt an emotion? Of course it does. So by way of example, your principal says to you in the morning break, stop by my office. I need to talk with you. Oh, very interestingly, I will ask how many of you immediately thought it was going to be negative? The hands go up. Why is it? Why do we automatically jump to something negative? That's an assumption. The principal has a letter of praise, but in the meantime, for a number of hours, you were thinking negative thoughts because you assume. Again, assumption is the the cause of so many negative feelings. If you don't know, don't assume. It's important to understand how inextricably are tied kids' feelings and their learning. Because if a kid has a negative feeling, or if you said something that is negative, chances are learning has stopped. Again, the reason why I'm emphasizing this is because so many teachers do not think about kids' feelings. Everyone has got feelings regardless of age. 
And if you want to be a successful teacher, you've got to think about how kids feel about what you're doing and what you're saying to them. You are all familiar with Jean Piaget's hierarchy of cognitive development. Unfortunately, we often invert what he taught us. Obviously, a 13-year-old has more cognitive development than a 3-year-old. But both the 3-year-old and the 13-year-old have feelings. Every human does. Even an infant cries or smiles, depending on the situation. So do your students. We invert Piaget's advice when we communicate to any youngster as if that person possesses the cognitive development we expect, but has no feelings.